Coming up on City View, solar funding, cash incentives for customers who install solar systems. Check out the city's business solutions center where small business owners will find a variety of free resources. Back in parking, the concept is being tested in a few areas of Austin. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Leslie Sopko. Those stories and more, but first. Austin Energy's new general manager, Larry Weiss, joined the utility at the end of September and is quickly focusing on a long list of high-priority items. That list includes an upcoming rate review, implementation of an ambitious generation plan, and a recognition that the way electric utilities have traditionally operated will see a change in the future. Well, that's the actual first part of the plant that was built were these four simple cycles, units one through four. Oh, these are the newer ones? These are the two new ones, oh, six okay. and seven. They came online in June. Austin Energy General Manager Larry Weiss has been quick to size up the challenges that face the utility, and he has a sense of candor that you can't help but appreciate. His first priority is to continue to provide reliable and affordable electric service and excellent customer service. Mr. Weiss also knows the electric utility industry is changing and Austin Energy must strive for cleaner sources of energy and offer more choices for customers in managing their electric use. He wants those types of decisions to be made with good customer input. Our customer base needs to get involved in the choices that we make. Um, Austin Energy is a, a junction and the junction is we're going to be heading this utility off in a direction that's perhaps different than utilities around the rest of the state. We're standing by Unit 6. It has its own startup, shutdown and run status criteria, so it's its own little entity. Mr. Weiss is already meeting with stakeholders as he continues to evaluate utility operations and the needs of the community. At Austin Energy, this means looking over the company and meeting with employees. I'm not here to change the culture of Austin Energy. I'm here to improve it and to make it functional, and I'm here to work with all of you and to make this uh, the best team possible. Mr. Weiss joins the utility at a time when Austin Energy is facing some major tasks. One is a review and restructuring of Austin Energy base electric rates, which have not changed since 1994. Another task will be the implementation of a city council approved generation plan that sets high goals for energy efficiency and for the amount of renewable energy provided by the utility. All of the goals that are laid out in this plan will cost money, it'll be more expensive. And the question will be, what is the tolerance for our consumers to meet these objectives and have those costs versus what the rest of the state of Texas and the rest of the United States is doing for that matter. With all the wind and solar potential in Texas, Mr. Weiss says more renewable energy is a natural fit for Austin. The question will be how quickly the transition is made. One of the reasons I was interested in this job is because of the, of, of the challenges of bringing on renewable energy. Challenging as it may sound, Mr. Weiss has an excellent track record for acquiring renewable energy. In fact, he successfully increased the use of renewable energy to 28 percent while working for the Turlock Irrigation District in California. He feels confident he can help Austin meet its generation goals. And speaking of more clean energy, Austin Energy recently announced $4 million in available rebate funding for homeowners and businesses who install solar systems and solar hot water units. Rebates are issued on a first-come, first-served basis, so if you've been thinking about investing in solar, now's a good time to contact Austin Energy. The guidelines and procedures are listed at austinenergy.com. The solar rebate program, begun in 2004, has assisted the installation of more than 1,200 solar energy systems throughout Austin. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development awarded the Capital Area Council of Governments a $3.7 million grant to help design areas of town that merge housing, transportation, and other services. The goal is to build more livable and sustainable communities. This grant will harness our community's innovative capabilities. We'll bring IBM and the University of Texas together to create modeling programs for our long-range planning efforts. By using these supercomputers, we'll be able to analyze the effects of transportation, the economy, the environment in various different scenarios. This information 
will allow us to plan for our future wisely. Central Texas continues to grow by leaps and bounds. We must work together for this growth and protect our quality of life. This initiative is part of a long-range transportation plan that includes almost 40 mixed-use developments designed for ease of walking as well as accessing public transportation. The City of Austin is a member of the Capital Area Council of Governments, which includes Travis and nine other surrounding Central Texas counties. And now it's time for our City Council update. Contractors bidding for business with the city will need to make an extra effort to work with subcontractors certified as minority or women-owned businesses. The Austin City Council approved a new ordinance to increase the minimum efforts contractors will have to make to find those subcontractors. The city will also be able to consider the efforts other bidders made to meet goals for hiring minority and women-owned subcontractors. The council approved an update to the city's hazard mitigation action plan. The initial plan had been completed in 2004. Local governments need action plans approved by the federal government to be eligible for certain disaster-related funding. And council also approved the Parks and Recreation Department's plan to work with AISD and the GO Project, which helps special education students aged 18 to 22 transition to independent living. The program will use the South Austin Recreation Center to work with students on life skills, including vocational training and how to get around using public transportation. In all, council considered seven items at its October 28th meeting. Its next regularly scheduled meeting is November 4th. For City View, I'm Larry Schooler. Austinites will have the chance to vote for a $90 million transportation bond package on the November 2nd ballot. In an effort to inform City of Austin voters about the bond, the city has circulated educational brochures and produced a video on the proposed projects and programs being considered. The City of Austin has scheduled a $90 million mobility bond election for November 2, 2010. Proposed projects include investments in streets, sidewalks, bike paths, trails and transit infrastructure in all parts of the City of Austin. This bond package was developed by city staff working with the community since fall of 2009 to collect, evaluate and recommend priority mobility projects. A City Council appointed Citizens Task Force recommended the bond proposal in July. If these bonds are approved by voters, the debt service is expected to be funded within the current tax rate. No increase in the property tax rate is anticipated. The proposed package includes funding for preliminary engineering, design, construction and reconstruction of Austin roadways. Funding to repair and install sidewalks, curbs, ramps and gutters and other accessibility projects as part of the Americans with Disabilities Act ADA program and for bicycle and sidewalk facilities identified in the city's bike plan and sidewalk master plan. Funding for traffic signal system updates, including modifying and upgrading existing signals and school flashers, and for new intersection infrastructure throughout Austin to manage traffic on city roadways. And funding for the city's participation in joint agreements with Travis County, Texas Department of Transportation and other transportation providers to design and construct regional improvement projects. If approved, some of the projects in the 2010 Mobility Bond Program may include mobility infrastructure on I-35 between approximately William Cannon Drive and US-290 in coordination with the Texas Department of Transportation, preliminary engineering for sidewalk and bicycle facilities on East Riverside Drive from approximately IH-35 to Ben White Boulevard, the boardwalk trail at Lady Bird Lake between Congress Avenue Bridge and Lakeshore Park, which would connect pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure between the east and the west sides of IH-35. Partnering with other transportation agencies to improve access to downtown Austin from Loop 1 Mopac. Improving pedestrian access to Allen Elementary School in the Johnston Terrace neighborhood. Preliminary engineering for future transportation infrastructure in the FM 969 corridor. East Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard between US 183 and the city of Weberville. <laughs> Designing roadway infrastructure for future construction on South Congress Avenue at William Cannon Drive in coordination with TxDOT. Near-term traffic management infrastructure on US 290 at the Oak Hill Y. For more information on the proposed mobility bond proposition, visit www.cityofaustin.org forward slash news forward slash mobility bond dot htm. The election will be held Tuesday, November 2, 2010. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Early voting for the November 2010 elections will be conducted October 18th through the 29th. 
Visit cityboston.org for more voter information, including early voting locations and election day polling places. Moving on from Austin's roadways to parking spaces, the city's transportation department is testing the use of back-end angle parking. Though new to Austin, back-end angle parking is recognized nationwide as a safer method of parking for both drivers and pedestrians. In this story, Channel 6 highlights the safety benefits and offers simple steps to take when backing into a parking spot. Does this look familiar? Backing into traffic on a busy road is something drivers face every day. Well, Austin is working to make parking safer. Here's how it works. Back in angle parking is one step easier than parallel parking. Simply signal the traffic behind, pull past the spaces as you would with parallel parking, and back in. Loading packages is safer here on the sidewalk. And open doors block you from busy streets. And the best part, when you're ready to leave, it's easy to see oncoming traffic, including bicyclists. In Austin, bicycles are a popular way to get around. Bicycle lanes around town help protect cyclists from the flow of traffic. But drivers backing out of spaces blindly creates potential for a collision. Back in angle parking helps remove this danger and has proven effective not only in the cities across the U.S., but right here in Austin. For over a year, drivers and cyclists on Dean Keaton Street have safely shared the road. And new to 6th Street business, owners Jim of Swedish Hill and Brad Fortney of Fortney's Antique say they have seen the benefits too. I love the fact that I can now load people's car from the safety of the sidewalk. We don't have to worry about major amount of traffic. I like that when they're finished and ready to leave, that they can comfortably depart whenever the traffic is clear. They have a full view of, of the road and so much safer. I've been here back in Austin 17 years. I never parked on 6th Street when it was head in parking. I park out there all the time now. It's, it's, it's changed, it's different. It was a little hard at first and, and now I'm used to it and most of our customers have gotten used to it and really like it. So Austin, as you encounter back in angle parking around town, remember, it's easier than parallel parking, and more importantly, safer for everyone who shares our roads. Finally, the City of Austin provides a variety of free resources for small business owners, including a business solutions center. Every day, about two dozen entrepreneurs come to the center to conduct research, create business documents, and take advantage of the professional workspace. I came to the Business Solutions Center today because there's so many resources here and there's so much excitement in the atmosphere. It's a great place to come and work on proposals, get information. There's photocopiers, there's fax machines, and all kinds of great resources that are easily accessible. Some of the tasks that business owners can do in the Business Solutions Center include researching demographics information. They can also look up business industry profiles. They can look up templates of pre-prepared legal documents so they don't have to produce them from scratch. And then finally, they can also look up specific company information, whether it be the address, the number of employees, or even the size of the company based on revenue. The resources that are available in the Business Solutions Center include 12 terminals. Additionally, we have printing machinery, including a fax machine, color printer, and a full-sized uh, plotter for construction plans. The advantage of the Business Solutions Center is that it is suitable for all types of customers. We assist uh, startups, individuals looking to really just kind of get started on their business, to uh, more experienced uh, veteran business owners that are looking specifically for uh, demographics information or research information. I would definitely recommend the Center to Business Owners because it's a great place to start. It's a really awesome place to come and learn how to grow your business in Austin.
With more than 90% of Austin area firms employing fewer than 100 people, the city understands that small businesses play a big role in the local economy. The Business Solutions Center is located at 505 Barton Springs Road and is open Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Visit austinsmallbiz.org or call 974-7800 to learn more. And that's all for this edition of City View. I'm your host, Leslie Sopko. Join us again for our next episode, which premieres Friday, November 12th. Thanks for watching.